This video will help you decide how to create your cybersecurity career path. So I get a lot of questions in my comments specifically around how to grow in your cybersecurity career. What do the career paths look like? At what level should you be after XYZ number of years of experience? So in this video, hopefully I'm going to cover all those questions and answers to help you figure out where you want to go in cybersecurity. Obviously, I can't lay out an exact career path for a specific role that works for everyone because you guys are going to have different wants and needs out of your career. And some people might want to go into red team, some people might want to go into blue team, some people might want to do a little bit of everything, which is also me. And it's kind of hard to lay out a exact career plan when, when honestly, I would be very much open to any kind of role in cybersecurity. So what I'm going to do is go through a group of topics for you guys to think about and brainstorm while you're deciding what role you want to go into in cybersecurity and where you want to take your career. All right, the first question to ask yourself is generalist versus specialist so a generalist is someone who typically knows a little bit about everything usually know enough to do the job but it is in your best interest to know high level about many different things across your organization you're not specifically a network engineer but you can figure things out and you know basic networking concepts you may have a grasp on network security but it's not necessarily your specialty and you have a lot of different interests and skill sets outside of networking as well compared to a specialist whose main knowledge base and skill set is in network security and i'm using network security as an example here by the way so you're probably the person that people go to for advice on all things network security you're the sme or the subject matter expert and you're probably going to be oftentimes a person who has the final say in decision making outside of your manager or maybe an executive but for the most part you're the one who's providing the background information for people to help make decisions on important things related to the field of specialty that you have typically from what i've seen i feel like people are either one or the other they're a generalist where they know a lot about a lot of different things or they're a specialist and they're a subject matter expert and everyone goes to them for one thing and anytime someone brings up a specific topic they're like oh go to John or oh go to Sally so this is I think one of the first pivotal things to consider when you're deciding where you want to go personally for me I'm someone who knows that I enjoy being a generalist I don't think I want to be in one specific area of cybersecurity um, and I may not even want to stay in cybersecurity for the rest of my career either for the most part I'm trying to get as well-rounded as possible and be able to take those skills and be be able to provide input into a bunch of different things maybe not in depth of course compared to a specialist and there's definitely roles in every organization for both of these types of learners slash doers the next thing you want to consider is whether you want to be an engineer or an analyst now obviously these are very vague terms that i'm using but i'm speaking specifically from a definition perspective so an engineer is someone who builds something whether you're a security engineer or a network engineer or a systems engineer some kind of engineer you're building something you're setting something up you're troubleshooting you're doing the hands-on work and then an analyst is someone who obviously analyzes stuff um, maybe they're looking at logs maybe they're using the platforms that the engineers are building and troubleshooting and and maintaining and everything like that the analysts are typically going to be those end users of those products or platforms or, or whatever other services that your company needs to run and i don't think you have to specifically just be one and not the other i'm sure there are many people out there who do both of these jobs as an engineer as well as an analyst but i'm really just oversimplifying here there's definitely a common skill set that both of these groups of people use but it really depends on the type of work that you want to be doing on the day-to-day -day job for example do you enjoy troubleshooting and tinkering around with technology and maybe fixing a problem if there is one or maybe you're writing code or scripting or digging into some technical details compared to an analyst who may be analyzing logs they may be reviewing alerts maybe they're trying to understand a certain subset of data or a certain subset of of log anomalies that they've been seeing over and over for again so it really depends on how you want to spend your day in my opinion um, when it comes to deciding if you want to be an engineer versus an analyst as someone who's worked on both sides of this i really think both roles have their pros and cons and some roles have both of these mixed in one and it's really up to you what you want to do but it is a great way to kind of determine what you want to do on a regular basis and also help lead the questions for if you do go into an interview for a specific job ask questions that, that tell you what you'll be doing in this job whether it's engineering type work or analyst type work and the next thing I want to cover is a fairly hot topic and that is going into management or staying as an IC or an individual contributor. So of course there is a lot that goes into this conversation and decision outside of just saying hey I want to be a people manager um, but for the most part it really depends on your skill set obviously the types of roles and experience that you've had and of course you can even split up management into, into managers who manage projects and managers who manage people which are very different jobs as well as an individual contributor which is also a very different job than a manager just because you're a really good let's say security analyst doesn't mean that you're going to be a very good security manager managing a team of security analysts I really think that people skills probably have the 
most say in terms of the type of role that you want to go into especially if you're going into management and i'm sure you heard the horror stories and quotes out there about about how people don't leave bad companies they leave bad managers and i can definitely see some truth to that especially because especially because your manager impacts the majority of the work that you're doing as well as how you're feeling at work so this is definitely not you know a yes or no easy one or zero decision that you're going to make but if you do decide to go into management in your future um, down the line then i do think that taking the appropriate professional development training um, leadership courses bias training diversity and inclusion everything that goes into the management side that should be your focus specifically so that you're able to be the best manager that you can for your team so that they're able to thrive and in turn just make a really good team culture but of course you can also decide to stay as an individual contributor which is probably what i would prefer to do i do not have any plans to become a people manager i do not want to be a manager and i've actually had a mentor in the past who was on the ethical hacking team and he was very good at his job also very good people skills and he tried management for a while and he did not enjoy it and he went back to being a red teamer so you know it really goes to show that there's a lot out there that you can try but it doesn't mean that you have to stick with it if you don't want to but i also think that goes to show that management in general is for a specific personality anytime you're working with people and interpersonal relationships and communications I think overall that is a very difficult task but that's not to say that individual contributor roles are a walk in the park obviously when you go down further in your career you may become a senior analyst or a senior engineer or maybe you're on the red team and you're definitely going to be working on solving hard problems dealing with the fire drills um, providing some expertise based on your experience and your knowledge so while the roles are very different they both definitely have their pros and cons and the next thing i want to discuss is certifications versus no certifications so this one is more so of a personal preference but i do think that having or not having certifications is definitely going to make an impact on your career while cybersecurity doesn't necessarily require you to have a master's in cybersecurity to move up a to a promotion or that next level oftentimes there may be some need for maybe a certification or some way to prove or validate that you are ready for that next step and oftentimes it does come down to a certification especially in cybersecurity where we love our certifications so if you're someone who's working in cybersecurity, maybe you have seven, 10 years of experience, then at that point, if you don't yet have a certification, maybe the CISSP is a great place to start, which is a pretty typical certification to get once you're kind of heading towards your mid to senior career. And the certification is also highly sought after and very, very popular amongst employers. So if you get that certification, it will definitely be a lot easier for you to find jobs moving forward. But that's not to say that if you don't want to study for a certification, it means that you can never get promoted again. I definitely don't think that's the case but i do think that it kind of helps give you helps provide you leverage for maybe that next promotion or a higher salary if you're staying at your current role or switching jobs to a different company but it's just things to think about when you're going through your career along with the questions of oh when am i going to go for my next career switch my next job switch when am i going to ask for a promotion when am i going to ask for a salary increase it may be helpful to tie that in with when am i going to study for my next certification what next certification do i want to get what next set of skills do i want to learn and those can also help guide you and answering those questions can also tie back in to your salary and promotion questions and kind of bring those together so that you're able to understand what your options are when you get to the point where you are asking for a promotion or you are asking for a salary increase and the last thing you may want to consider is whether or not you want to make many or few job changes so i think this will also highly depend on the generation that you're from um, if you're someone who is a gen z like me or if you're a millennial even then you probably are switching jobs every few years or so that seems to be the trend based on average years of average years of tenure but if you're someone who is gen x or older then you may have a longer tenure on average compared to people who are just starting out in their careers and aren't necessarily tied to a job for more than two or three years from what i've seen and not to say that one is necessarily better than the other definitively it really depends on your career goals and what you want to do there are many people who switch jobs every few years for that salary increase or promotion but there are many people who also maybe stayed at a company for 10 11 years and then eventually make it to an SVP level or a director level. It really does depend on the effort that you put into your job, not necessarily how much you change jobs, but again, I do think in the short term that switching jobs more often, especially in your early career, can definitely help you get that boost in salary that you may be looking for. And that is also another reason why many young people who go into the workforce do decide to switch jobs after about two, three, maybe even four years. 
and this definitely seems like a common trend especially in the gen z but asking yourself this question will kind of help you gauge hmm, what companies would i want to work for next and personally what i do is have a list a short list basically of about 40 companies that i would want to join um obviously i update this list probably every few years or so when i'm starting to look for jobs and it gives me an idea of what options and opportunities might be out there for me and it also gives me an idea of what I want to actually be doing and not necessarily just looking on Google search and looking up a bunch of different security jobs and I think it's best to be as intentful as possible with your career choices and one of the best ways to do that is deciding what companies you want to work for, how long you want to work at those companies, um, what sectors you want to go into, which ones are most strategic to the things that you want to do. For example, if your dream job is to become a VP at Google, then you have to plan out the route to get there and, it, and it's definitely going to look different for everybody. And let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see a video on my career goals that I'm kind of aiming for. I don't think I've made an updated video on that in a while, but, but I do think that may be relevant for those of you who may be interested. And by the way, I do have a course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity and I can link that down in the description below, but it essentially includes everything that I use personally to get my first job and my second job in cybersecurity, specifically for my cybersecurity resume, career letter cybersecurity interview prep guide the actual job application process and all the other resources i used if you guys want to check that out as well all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below i'm happy to answer them also let me know if you guys have any specific video topics that you might want to see from me i'm posting one day one video a day for december so if you see this video in December, that is most likely what I'm already doing. But typically, I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!